G'day. Some of you may have heard of the Christmas Day Truce. It all started late Christmas Eve in 1914. The British Expeditionary Force, known as the BEF, were dug in, and as they shivered with cold they looked across no man's land. They could see the Germans had placed small fir trees along their trenches, and they were singing carols and other happy and patriotic songs. Even though the British couldn't understand the language, they recognised some of the tunes. One of the tunes that was being sung was Still A Nut or Silent Light. Not long after, messages of goodwill were shouted across no man's land from the German trenches and the occasional boot was thrown from one side to the other with gifts of sausages, cigarettes and even chocolate. This continued through the night until the next morning. At daybreak, the soldiers came out of their trenches and after more gifts were exchanged, friendly games of football or soccer as we know it broke out and not long after, a truce was called to bury the dead and repair trenches. There were also some prisoner exchanges between enemies. This truce didn't happen everywhere in 1914. In some areas the killing continued throughout Christmas. The story that came to light in 2014 describes how two British soldiers, Private Percy Huggins and Sergeant Tom Gregory, was shot on Christmas morning by a German sniper. Earlier that morning, the Germans put up some lanterns and called across offering a truce, but the D Company Worcestershire Regiment, a company of professional soldiers, shot out the lanterns and declined the truce. Private Huggins was ordered into no man's land on sentry duty. He positioned himself just 20 yards from the enemy, and not long after he was sighted by a German sniper and was killed with a single bullet to his head. Sergeant Tom Gregory, his friend, asked and was given permission to head out to avenge Private Huggins. He spotted the sniper who had killed Huggins and in turn killed that sniper with one shot to the head as well. Unfortunately, he was spotted by another sniper when he fired the shot and was killed himself. This incident happened not far from the Rue de Bois near the French village of Festubert. If only they had accepted the truce, these men would not have died needlessly on Christmas Day. These two soldiers were part of the 149 Commonwealth servicemen who lost their lives on December 25th, 1914. Here is a quote from German Lieutenant Kurt Ziemisch. How marvellously wonderful, yet how strange it was. The English officers felt the same way about it. Thus Christmas, the celebration of love, managed to bring mortal enemies together as friends for the first time. The Christmas truce of 1914 was not the only spontaneous truce. In some quiet areas of the front during the year, the opposing soldiers developed a system of live and let live. These truces would be called upon to remove the dead and wounded and sometimes a warning system was in place. For example, if the Germans were ordered to fire at the British, they would ring a bell a minute or so before firing. The British returned the favour. By 1916, none of these practices were taking place anymore. Too much heartache, too much pain, too much stress, too much of everything beyond what a man can endure had eaten them away to a point where the enemy was the enemy and nothing else existed. Survival and nothing but survival was the name of the day. We must always be vigilant, ready to stand against governments who want to drag us into these horrors. We must always remember, least we forget. The rifles fell silent on this Christmas Eve as one soldier sings and another soldier grieves for the loss of his mates in his home that he had. He was just seventeen when he left as a lad. Silent night rang out across misted fields. The enemy fellow man listened in the breeze and as the mist cleared away a sound did arise, an angelic sound. It brought tears to his eyes. It was the enemy, you see, the ones he tried to kill. They were singing so true, their voices so trill. So the rifles fell silent on this Christmas Eve, as one soldier sang, another soldier grieved. 